Hey everybody and welcome back to another edition of the BH Sales Kennel Cow Holistic Healing Hour with your host and moderator me, Grandpa Bill. Welcome one and all. Some of you here via our invitation were applicable. My two church mice, Peter and Paul, each and every day. Welcome as we continue now in our sixth year straight in generating two audio shows each and every day in this YouTube offering at Bill Holt 8792. Please like us share us give us the thumbs up more importantly where you're comfortable in doing so please do subscribe we continue to grow exponentially with your help by paying your for we encompass many subjects that always come under the categories of food for the mind the body and the soul with in-studio guests and of course seven days a week lots of times without studio guests been blessed to have well over 200 in-studio guests the last couple of years. Got one right around the corner today, a little bit later. I'll talk about himself right before the end of this show. So here at the YouTubes, I usually talk between 10 and 20 minutes and use it as a gathering ground to collect my own thoughts as to what's actually going to migrate out to my shows. Today, continuing archivally, talking about this idea I've got about possibly entertaining writing my first book at age 70. Drawing board, vision boards, interaction, and some ideas, and involving my granddaughter, Ada. Future reference as possibly being a co-author on this book. So synopsized here, wherever you come in on the archival notes, or if you're brand new here, archival A, threw it off the cuff with a character possibly named Codman Fisher, alias Codfish, nickname. Some characters possibly call Crab, and basically... It will encompass Portal Maine. It will be a fiction novel. It'll probably be a murder crime mystery. It is embraced on a program, Magnetic Memory Method. Dr. Anthony Medivier, two time guest on my show, the originator, creator of the said program. I took his program. In 2023, completed it in June of, started it in January. Have gone back many, many times to including like five minutes ago. Referencing the videos, the different sections, the PDF. And I have a couple of Dr. Medivier's books, but his present one, Flyboy, which is his very intriguing memory method, memory palace mnemonic based crime fiction crime novel of his and i'm about halfway in just about of reading his novel it precipitated me on a couple of ideas that have been batting around in this old cranium for a really long time portland maine as the peninsula the portland waterfront the western prom area i grew up in the west end of portland the historical value to my family Enjoying walking through it, including my granddaughter and my son. Old war stories of my days up in the area that my granddaughter seems to love. My son has a few of his own and likes to recant to mine. The history, architecturally rich, of Portland, Maine, and the, and the very rich history of Maine and Portland overall. And basically, it's about a palatial mansion financial empire involving seafood industry in all facets of the actual products, clams, lobstering, seafood shellfish, sea vegetation, but also technology, microbiology technology. And this company, Crowder uh, Fisher's company, has indeed been cyber attacked. And as the crime will develop and is developing, it may involve not only regional seafood espionage and technology 
of the company being cyber attacked, but it may also be local, regional, and maybe international, and maybe on the black market due to now the impugned integrity of the technology itself, the client base involved, their protection of their private history. And this is all going to be embraced around things that I did in my past as a career for a supplementation for both humans and animals. And the detective, which will probably be me, will be scatterbrained. I think I passed that prerequisite. And for instance, it'll talk about things like utilizing kelp and fish oil, which are really good for your brain and your focus. That ties into one of my audio shows, Workouts for Geriatrics, a.k.a. Silver Streakers, Good for All Kids from 1 to 92. Physical exercises, resistance bands, free weights, nutrition, actual insurance coverage, everything about health and wellness. And then one of my other audio shows is Main Mentor Moments in Business and in Life, mostly in life, now retired. It has a little bit to do with that, too. So what I've been doing archivally here is starting to ask for your guys and gals' help through the probing questions that I ask every day, hopefully perceived as such, in my blogs, my blogs, my YouTubes, pertinent to the subject matter, <laughs> with guests and without, at the said shows, as they generate and fetter out. So I'm trying to make this a creative vision board, a community vision board, a note board, because I also interview many authors, including a couple that are upcoming on my shows. So I'll be asking for their input as well and, you know, going down memory lane with them on being a novice for me for sure about possible character development. So a couple of quick questions here. You guys and gals helping me out, and if indeed you've authored a book or something like that, how did you develop your main character's personality and backstory? And then interacting with me through the message board at BH Sales Kennel Cup Holistic Healing Hour, voicemail message board, what inspired your motivations and or your flaws, if indeed you are a writer? And how did you overcome writer's block, if indeed that's applicable to yourself? What strategies or techniques do you and did you use to overcome writer's block and maintain creativity? Especially way back when, if you are a multi-time author, when you began your first novel, or if you're thinking of doing one your own, or character relating, having some fun, helping me create this developing fictional novel. So I exchanged some notes with some rough characters. Kyle Crabb might be a character. Codman Fisher is probably going to be the main character. It goes over three or four decades. Portland Waterfront, the Old Port area, Casco Bay, Western Farms specifically, Palatial Mansion, a $4 million church, which may ultimately be involved in being the housing for what ultimately turns out to be an international cyberspace attack boiler room operation that's actually owned by a competing business on a local level through the family history and the developing characters over a three-decade history of the Portland waterfront. A couple of the characters working together as kids on the waterfront, the fish factories actually starting small lobstering businesses together. Fishing separately and succinctly, Codman Fisher coming from an affluent family, his dad being a multi-billionaire, and then incorporating the family business. So I'm also having visions of developing a clue-based board game like the old Milton Bradley clue game. My granddaughter seems intrigued in that. One of her attributes, for those of you that are familiar with this, She's very scholastically gifted. This is all encompassed around her being an intern here at the show, which will now probably commence on her senior year of high school, which is right around the corner. She's a JavaScript expert, has written an app in coding. She'll be a co-editor on the book and contributing under that element. She's here to tutor me 
In Mandarin, which is one of the techniques I learned through the magnetic memory method for real, and now it's a seventh month sojourn, which will encompass being interloped into the novel because we may do it in a bilingual form. This will be definitely a two to three year project, probably. So intrigue and suspense, who done it? Mystery lovers, suspenseful, twist and churns, psychological thrillers, literary fiction, creative writing, bookworm readers of Instagram, batting around all these hashtags and potential titles. I'm looking for interaction in trying to create a fictional vision board and rough notes before I assimilate it all together and start to put pen to paper, which I already have done. So this is also coinciding with another book I just got by Dr. Anthony McKeevier that charts out a weekly project for all of the students that participate by getting the book over the next 52 weeks whenever you get the book to do so, or if you already have it. I believe it's just been released. So I've already revisited the first project, which is encompassed in the free PDF part and possible of the program itself, and talking about Simonides. Do check out my archival show about Simonides, how he remembered uh, all the names in an event that he was in ancient Greece invited to speak at as a narrator, a poet, and having this. Uh, Pension for remembering. And lo and behold, the building collapses, synopsizing that story. And he was outside. Um, there's a reason for that. And when he came back, he was able to actually identify all of the dead people from the seating arrangement, having remembered where they were seated during his performance. That's a very synopsized version of that story as a crux of the base of this novel. So a little bit all over the proverbial mulberry bush here. It's definitely going to be a Portland-based fictional novel based on memory method techniques. I'll probably be the investigating detective, if you will, with definite brain issues and utilizing the things that I've done in the past, incorporating them into the show, because I continue to talk about the things I've done in the past in Goodwill Ambassadorship in the way of providing good health and wellness overall, mental and otherwise. So I'll be putting together a show a little bit later today on an update of the Greater Portland Crab Caper for right now a very tentative title to get you guys and gals opinions and interaction and hopefully follow along. I'm going to make this as sequential as I can moving forward, utilizing your help along with the structured help and the many authors that have been blessed to have on my show, to including Tim Doyle, who's coming up a little bit later at taping. The Path to Oneness will be talking about trapped souls. That's all embraced the whole program in between the two lunar cycles, which we're in the midst of again. And we'll be talking about that at one of my shows, uh, astrology-wise, about Leo. So that's it in a nutshell for just shy of <clears throat> 15 minutes here. Join me at the shows. And hopefully we can get a community going, having some fun, and you guys and gals can be virtual co-authors <laughs> if I ever become one to begin with. So let's have some fun. It's a distraction from all the craziness that goes on in the world right now, and I think that's good in and of itself, and it is, because I'll be talking about the neuroplasty that gets enriched by these techniques, and I'll leave you with one memory technique that I'm going to practice right now that ties into the aforementioned program that you can find out by signing up for Dr. Anthony's programs, unless you already are. Exchange that with me, too. Okay. I'm going to quickly try to create kind of a hologram and a mnemonic here right now based on The Last Supper. And the table arrangement, the seating arrangement, and I quickly am going to close my eyes. 
I see a carving that my mom used to have on like a section of a tree that actually had the bark. Someone had painted this on a, out of an oval section carved out of an oak tree, I think, with the bark on the end being very profound. And then the imagery all hand painted of the Last Supper with Jesus at the head of the table. So to Jesus's right, and I will probably screw up the names of the apostles correctly at this point, I'll get that corrected, but Peter, Simon Peter, was immediate to his right of the 12 apostles, and I believe Andrew the fisherman was next in succession. And then a couple of quick crazy mnemonics, I have Simon Peter you know, Peter Pan, I see Peter Pan with the profound hat to help me remember Simon Peter as the Apostle Peter and sitting to the right of Jesus. Andrew was indeed the fisherman in the Bible. So I see a big fishnet, speaking of waterfront in my novel and the jargon of waterfront. I see a big fishnet hanging over Andrew's head. Okay, going to Jesus' left, this is where I'll probably start to screw this up. There's two Jameses that are possible, uh, apostles. I'll clarify both of them. The first James is to Jesus' left. I'll get to a mnemonic for him. And then there's John to the left of Andrew. And then I'm going to be going around the table with the other 12 apostles in my mnemonic that I'll clarify at my audio show a little bit later. But trying to go right to left, and I probably will screw up the seating succession right now from this hologram. Okay, so going to Jesus' right, Simon Peter, Andrew, with those couple of mnemonics, and I'll have complete mnemonic references as I do them later at the audio show. And then as you go around the alcove of a rectangular table depicted on my mom's oak tree painting of the Last Supper, going back to when I was a kid of the very early 60s, envisioning that picture here to try to remember the names and faces. Okay, so as you go around, Jesus is right, Simon, Peter, Andrew, and then there's Matthew, and I believe the other James adjacent on the L wing of the rectangle. And then as you go around to the other square of the rectangle, and I probably do have them out of succession, I'll clarify it at the audio show, there's Thaddeus, Philip, Bartholomew, and one that Another Simon, another Simon, and then, of course, Judas Iscariot, as you come around on the rectangle, opening my eyes, will be extreme left. I'll tie all of that in at the audio show. That's an example of a memory, magnetic memory technique in practicing how to compartmentalize it. And uh, I'll see you all at the show. Let's continue to pay it forward. We're blessed to be members of many intuitive groups. That's the concept of sharing everything. Yours, mine, and ours, thriving alive to survive mental health in this issue and thriving in cognitive and focusing issues, isolating at the workhouse for geriatrics encompassed around novels and memory malice, memory palace techniques. We continue to support people, Main Street Portland, Maine, Main Street USA, Main Street around the world, been blessed with global exposure. To continue to support wild animals being driven out of their environments worldwide, feral rescue pets, domesticated pets with the same challenges as their people, good, clean foods, medicines, hopefully perceived as a harbinger of good information. Talking about plants, this planet, myself as the porcelain junction box, putting it in with global butchers, bakers, candlestick makers in touch. Doctors, authors, psychotherapists, psychoanalysts, entrepreneurs, women's health experts, men's health experts. We cover the gamut with your help being Goodwill Ambassadors. Join us each and every day one more time on the YouTube channel, Grandpa Bill 8792. Like us, share us, 
do subscribe. We do grow one star seed at a time, and that's what it's all about. We do it communally, arm in arm. My next guest is from China, Tim Doyle. We'll be talking to him in just a few hours at recording, and we'll be talking about trap souls there. Join us each and every day. Bye-bye for now. Make it a safe and productive guy. Peace, everybody.